Welcome everyone to this tutorial about Bluetooth Low Energy in Android. In this tutorial we will see how we can connect from an Android device to such a Bluetooth Low Energy sensor. In my case the sensor collects the room temperature and the humidity, but you can take any kind of sensor which has the capability of Bluetooth Low Energy. And to demonstrate you what we will build, uh, I will show you this little example app. When I press start here, the application automatically connects to the Bluetooth Low Energy Sensor and then retrieves data from it and refreshes the UI every second the sensor emits new data. I will also show you how you properly manage your permissions, and check if Bluetooth is enabled or disabled and how to manage the connection when the user minimizes the app and reopen it again and also if the user minimizes the app and uh, denies the permission or turns Bluetooth off and all that stuff and we will see how we can manage all these possibilities the user can interact with the app. So let's jump right into Android Studio. But well, before we go right into Android Studio, um, uh, one important thing here is that this is my mirrored Android device. So it's a real device here. Um, uh, the Android Studio emulator does not support Bluetooth yet. So if you want to follow along or build your own app, you need to have a real Android device here. Um, but if you're just interested in the technology and the logic behind this, you are also good to go. Alright, I'm in an empty Android Studio Compose project here. For the UI I will use Chapter Compose, but the UI logic here is so simple. The main logic is in the Bluetooth Low Energy Service and the state management in a view model. So you can also apply most of this in uh, the XML layout approach. So first of all, we want to check the required dependencies. So in our build.cradle file, in the root build.cradle file, we need to add this dependency for Decker Hilt because we will use Decker Hilt for dependency injection and also the Decker Hilt plugin here. And in our build.cradle for the module, we need to uh, add these two plugins, one is the Kotlin Kept and the Decker Hilt plugin. And down here we have our dependencies. Um, this stuff here is for Dagger Hilt, then for navigation and compose, and for permission handling we will use Accompanist. But you will also find this uh, project setup in the video's description down below, so you don't need to type this off. You can just clone the Git repository or uh, copy and paste the dependencies. All right, first I want to create a new package for all the presentation stuff. Presentation. And in here, we start with our navigation composable, which will be a composable navigation. And inside here, we will have a nav controller is equal to remember nav controller. And I won't go into deep details of Jetpack Compose and navigation and all that stuff. The main the main focus here is the Bluetooth Low Energy Service. So I will build up this uh, UI uh, rather quickly and take some time when the Bluetooth Low Energy Service is then agile. So we can use uh, for our different screens, the start screen and the main screen, a sealed class. I will call this screen, which takes a uh, well route. And then we will have a start screen which inherits from screen and the route is start screen and we will have our temperature humidity screen which I will call temp screen and this also needs to inherit from screen. And now in our uh, navigation composable we can define a nav host which takes a nav controller and the start destination. We will remove this graph and the start destination will be screen dot start screen dot route. So this is the first uh, screen we want to see uh, the, the start screen with the little start button. And inside here we can now define our composables and this will be on the one hand start screen dot route our start screen composable. And the second composable will be our temperature and humidity screen dot rod. And inside here we can define our composable or invoke our composables now. 
and the first composable will be uh, our start screen which we create a new Kotlin file for start screen so the start screen it takes start screen takes a nav controller because we want to navigate from the start screen to the temperature and humidity screen um, that's, that's, that's because we need a, a nav controller here and first of all we want to define a box which takes a modifier modifier fill max size and the content alignment will be content alignment dot center and inside this box we will have another box with a modifier and this modifier size will be 150 dp so uh, you can also take 100 dp or 200 uh, i think 150 is fine here we will have a clip here which will be circle shape otherwise when we click on this box uh, this would be a rectangle click effect and then we will also have a background which will be color dot blue and also circle shape and then we can make this box clickable and inside here we will navigate to the main screen and the content alignment will be alignment dot center inside this box we take a little space here so we will have text composable let's import that the text will be start the font size will be 35 sp and the font weight will be bold and the color will be color dot white so now we can uh, navigate here say nav controller dot navigate screen dot temperature and humidity screen dot route and we don't want the user to go back to the screen if he's already in the temperature and humidity screen so we can say pop up to screen dot start screen dot route and say inclusive is equal to true okay nice now we can go in the navigation and say start screen not this one start screen with the nav controller and pass the nav controller to our start screen the next thing we want to do is to define our temperature and humidity screen uh, we will implement the logic in the screen uh, later but just define it for the for sake of completion here for the navigation so temperature humidity t screen oh this won't be a class this will be a composable temperature humidity screen and this does not take any uh, arguments right now we'll just leave this empty until later and now we can say here temperature and humidity screen and in our main activity we can then remove this preview stuff here and we can also remove this here and say navigation so we can remove this imports and now we can uh, start the app and look if everything works fine so far and as you can see the little start button and when i click on this it should show an empty screen because we didn't define the temperature and humidity screen yet so this looks good and everything works fine until now the next thing we want to do is to set up dagger hilt for dependency injection because we have objects later which need to be provided at different points in our app and we don't want to manage the dependency creation on our own so we can use dagger hill for that therefore i will create a new package which i will call di and inside here we can create an app module we need to annotate this with add module and add install in single component double double column class if you don't know what dagger hilt is it's just a dependency injection framework which helps you to provide your dependencies um, with some uh, annotations you just need to define how to provide some dependencies here in such a module file and then dagger hilt uh, takes care of providing these dependencies in in our app so everywhere where we say add inject uh, we can construct constructor or field inject 
uh, our defined dependencies here. We will see this later. So we need to annotate this with add provides and add singleton because the first thing we want to provide is our um, Bluetooth adapter. Bluetooth adapter because we need the Bluetooth adapter on the one hand to check if Bluetooth is enabled or not and on the other hand we need to uh, use the Bluetooth adapter to create a Bluetooth low energy connection. This will return a Bluetooth adapter and uh, if we annotate this here with add application context, the Gehild knows how to provide this context because we need a manager first, Bluetooth manager, which we get from the context. Get system service, context of Bluetooth service as Bluetooth manager. And then we can say return manager.adapter. And now everywhere where we need this Bluetooth adapter, now the Bluetooth adapter gets created like this. All right, and then we need two more things to set up the Gehild. We need a application file or application class, which I will call BLE application, which inherits from application. And we need to say that this is a Hilt Android app. And we also need to declare this in our manifest here. Name will be BLE application. Then we can close this and we can also close this. And the last thing we need to do to set this up is to say Android entry point here in our main activity. And now we can say add inject late in it bar Bluetooth adapter Bluetooth adapter and Staggerhild will provide this adapter here in our main activity. I've chosen the main activity here for the Bluetooth adapter to check if Bluetooth is enabled or not because um, in Jetpack Compose this is a single applica uh, single activity um, application and um, uh, the logic that we need Bluetooth and need to check Bluetooth everywhere in our app is here um, applied because in our start screen we need to check if the Bluetooth is enabled and in our main screen temperature and humidity screen uh, we need to do that as well. So we can say on start here override the lifecycle function on start because we don't want to want the check in on create because on create is just invoked when the app starts at the first time and on start is also invoked when the user minimizes the app and reopen it again. So we need to somehow check here, um, show Bluetooth dialog, I will call this function. We need to check here if the Bluetooth connection is enabled and we can create a private function here for that, show Bluetooth dialog. And before we implement the logic here, we need a so-called uh, start, uh, intent start activity for result. And for that, we can say private val start Bluetooth intent for result, which will be a register activity for result, activity result contracts dot start activity for result. And then we can get the result here. So this variable we need to pass into a, a new a new intent or with this intent we can start the Bluetooth the Bluetooth dialog later on, which uh, asks the user um, to enable Bluetooth or to deny it. And then we can say uh, to get the to get the result of the user's click result code activity activity dot result okay. If this is not the case, then we will also show our Bluetooth dialog again. Inside our Bluetooth dialog function, we need to first check if Bluetooth is not enabled. So Bluetooth adapter is enabled and invert this. And if this is the case, we want to show the prompt to the user. So well enable Bluetooth, Bluetooth intent is equal to intent Bluetooth adapter dot action request enable. And then we can say start Bluetooth intent for result dot launch and enable Bluetooth intent. And now if Bluetooth is not enabled, the user uh, will get the prompt. And if he denies or does not accept to enable Bluetooth, then this function will get called again. And so it will repeatedly invoke. And yeah, let's, let's see how this looks uh, in our application.
and the app crashes okay i think it's because of the missing permission in the manifest uh, let's see yeah the the permission is missing here in our manifest so we need to say use this permission bluetooth and then we can try it again and now it looks good so um, uh, bluetooth is enabled currently we can minimize the app and disable it and when we reopen the app then the bluetooth dialog is showing and when we click on deny and deny then it continues showing until the user allows the permission or um, turns bluetooth on so now it's working and one thing is missing when the user is in the app and uses the control panel here and then disables you or turn off bluetooth then nothing will happen. Uh, it will happen when we reopen the app. Um, that's fine. But in the case the user uses the control panel here, uh, we need a broadcast receiver. But we will implement this later. So uh, we can also listen to changes within the app if the user turns Bluetooth off. And yeah, but that's fine for now. Well, let me think about it. Let's implement this broadcast receiver right now. In our presentation package, we create a new package called permissions. And inside this permissions package, we will have a system broadcast receiver Kotlin file, which will be a composable and takes a system action of type string and on system event with an intent as an argument does not return anything and first of all we need the context this local context.current and then we need the current on system event remember update state of our on system event and we need to import it i won't go into the deep details here because this video is already quite long and uh, we have a lot of things to do data with the bluetooth service so um yeah um, then we need a disposable effect because we just want to trigger this once and we also need to give a resource free um, when the composition disposes because we will need to register the broadcast receiver and um, then it should be also unregistered in the on dispose function so first of all we need a intent filter here intent filter of our system action and then we can create our broadcast receiver is equal to an anonymous object and this inherits from broadcast receiver and inside here we can then uh, override the on receive function and i won't call this p1 i call this intent and inside here we can say current on system intent uh, event uh, which takes our intent and down here we can then say context dot register receiver and then we can create uh, register our broadcast receiver and in the on dispose function we can then say context dot unregister receiver so that the resource will get free and up here we need to pass our intent filter as well now we can use our system broadcast receiver in our temperature humidity screen we say system broadcast receiver the system action will be bluetooth adapter dot action state changed and the on system event will be here bluetooth state action is equal to bluetooth state action and if this is null we can return and if not we can check if action is equal to bluetooth adapter dot action state changed and inside here we can then check for our bluetooth connection and therefore i will pass a lambda function here on blue state changed which does not take anything 
like this and then we can say our bluetooth state changed inside here if the actual bluetooth state has changed and then we need to go to our navigation file and also have this on bluetooth state changed functional and pass it in our temperature and humidity screen on bluetooth state changed and back in our main activity we can then go up here to the navigation and say bluetooth state changed no bluetooth dialog and now the broadcast receiver listens for bluetooth changes and we can test this right now Okay, let's allow Pluto and go to our temperature and humidity screen when we press on start. And now we can turn off Pluto here. And you can see the prompt is shown, but maybe you have noticed it. It's uh, shown twice, I think. So yeah, yeah, it's showing m multiple times. I don't know exactly why this is happening. Uh, maybe you have an idea, but we can fix this if we take a little pool variable. Uh, well, is dialog already shown is equal to false by default and then we can check if the dialog isn't shown at the moment this function gets triggered then we can show it and say is bluetooth dialog is already shown to true and we need to make this a var and we can also make this a private var and um, inside our register for activity result we then can say is Bluetooth dialog it's already shown to false and then we can check this again and this time when we when we turn up when we turn off Bluetooth then the dialog is only shown once so all right now things will get interesting we will have a look at our Bluetooth low energy service and before we start with the service, we need to define some helper classes and data classes. So first we create a new package in our root package called util. And inside here we will have a seal class resource. And I will just copy and paste this here. This resource class is kind of a helper class which can be wrapped around some data. And we can distinguish them between success, uh, success error and loading. And inside this data class, we have some data we can show at the UI. So we can the user inform of the uh, current state. But we will see this resource class later in action. And then we need a new package called data. And inside this data class, we will have a sealed interface, which is called connection state. And here we have the object connected which inherits from connection state and then we can duplicate this and paste it then we have the this connected state the uninitialized currently initializing so and then we can create a data class temp humidity result which has three properties on the one hand temperature which is a float on the other hand humidity which is also a float and a connection state of type connection state then we can create an interface which is kind of our protocol which the bluetooth low energy service needs to confirm so we have a temperature and humidity receive manager so the reason why I make this an interface is because um, uh, we can then inject this interface into our view model later and so the view model is just dependent on an abstraction and not a concretion and if in case you want to uh, write test cases uh, you can uh, inject a fake implementation of this temperature and humidity receive manager because uh, in test cases you don't want to uh, connect to a real Bluetooth low energy device to test your real model. 
The things such a temperature and humidity received manager needs to realize in the concrete implementation is uh, a data data flow. So this will be a mutable shared flow of type resource of type temp humidity result. And then we need also a, a, a functional a reconnect function disconnect function start receiving and functional close connection. We will see how this uh, functions will get used from our real model later on, but for now we just define them here. And now we can uh, provide a concrete implementation of this receive manager. We go to our data package, create a new package called PLE. And inside this package, we can create a class, temperature and humidity PLA receive manager. And this manager takes two constructor arguments, our Bluetooth adapter, private well, Bluetooth adapter and private well context. This, uh, this inject annotation here is for Dagger Hilt to say, um, please, please provide these two constructor arguments for me. And we define the Bluetooth adapter in our Dagger Hilt module. And Dagger Hilt also knows how to provide such a context. And then we need to implement our uh, defined interface here. And we will see we have an error here because we need to implement the methods. We can go to implement members and select all and press OK. And first we want to define our mutable shared floor flow, which is a mutable shared flow with no initial value by default, because at the beginning we don't have anything to, to emit. Before we take care of our four functions here, we need some private wells here. On the one hand, our BLE scanner, which will be initialized by lazy, so just if it's uh, required, Bluetooth adapter, Bluetooth lay low energy scanner. Then we will need our scan settings. Scan settings is equal to scan settings.builder. And here you can uh, provide scan, a scan mode. Um, I will use scan settings.low latency. Um, there are different uh, scan settings here. Um, low latency is for scanning a short period of time, but you can also. Um, scan for a longer time, just uh, read the documentation. There's, there are multiple multiple uh, possibilities here, and then we can say dot .build. Then we will also need a private var, a Bluetooth, Bluetooth get, which will be our main instance for the connection handling. And then we will also have a private var is scanning, which is false by default. And then we can start with our start receiving function down here. I will copy and paste it up here because we start with this now. And first of all, I want to um, create a private well chloroquine, chloroquine scope is equal to chloroquine scope dispatchers dot default because now we can uh, emit data to our flow that the view model collects and uh, update the UI. So we can say routine scope dot launch because uh, such an emission uh, to emit some value you need a routine scope. And yeah, we can say um, data dot emit. Let me take this in a new line. And now we can take our resource class the loading. So we inform that we are currently loading. And we are also able to pass a message here. So scanning BLE devices. And then we can say is scanning is equal to true. And also BLE scanner dot start scan. And we can pass uh, null for the filters, pass our scan settings. And then we also need to pass a scan callback, scan callback which we can define here. And this scan callback will be a private well scan callback, which is an anonymous object that inherits from scan callback. And inside here we can um, 
override the function on scan result. Remove this. So um, every time our scanner um, uh, detects a blue blue low energy device uh, in the near of five or ten meters, I don't know exactly how the the range is here. Um, uh, this on scan result function will get triggered. This callback function. And I am just interested here in my um, uh, Blue 2 low energy sensor, which I have here, this one, which, ha which has a specific uh, name and address. And you need to look for uh, in your user manuals of your device or sensor, which uh, has an address or what exactly the address or the name is, so you can filter here. Maybe you are also interesting in, interested in scanning all devices, but for me, um, it's enough to get results dot device dot name and we don't need this uh, optional scan result here we can um, uh, remove this um, question mark and if this is equal to uh, my device name here and i created this device name up here as a con as a, a private well and you need to look how your sensor um, is actually named or you can also take the address um, and can say here result dot device dot address this is a, a 48 bit address i think in hexadecimal code so if you want to um, scan for this address you can also choose the address all right and uh, if we are um, if we have found this device um, then we can say purity scope dot launch and we can then emit a new data and uh, it's still loading because it just found the device and uh, now the connection needs to be established so we can say message connecting into device all right and then inside here in this if block we can say if is currently scanning then result.device.connectget we pass the context then auto connect uh, is passed we will pass false here and we will pass a get callback well here are a lot of callback functions we need to also define the get callback uh, i will come to this soon uh, let's finish this here is scanning will be set to false then and our BLE scanner um, um, should also stop the scan, and uh, which is the the current instance here. This uh, scan callback, and it's complaining here uh, because of a missing permission. You can see this here, the Bluetooth Connect uh, permission. But we will do uh, permission handling uh, later in the UI. So right now we can just say. So Breslint uh, missing permission and so the error is gone but uh, yeah to um, uh, start receiving some uh, st start receiving or connecting to such a Bluetooth low energy device um, uh, the request the, the permission is uh, requested and required um, we will see this later so right now this uh, this lint suppress here is uh, fine so now things will get wild with our uh, get callback let's say private well get callback is equal to an anonymous object uh, as well here and this inherits from bluetooth get callback and then we can override the uh, callback functions and we will start with one connection state changed and remove the super call and we can also um, uh, remove the question mark here so we don't have an optional type here and then we can say if status Letters is equal to Bluetooth get dot get success server so success and open this else block as well and in our um, uh, in our get success block we can then um, check if new state is equal to Bluetooth get dot no not Bluetooth get Bluetooth profile dot state connected this means that we connect it to our device then we can emit a new uh, message to our view model because the state now changes or the the 
the um, process is changing. Um, we can say Qtin scope dot launch data dot emit, but we are still loading because we first need to discover the services of our Bluetooth Low Energy device. Um, if you don't discover the services first, uh, you won't retrieve any data. And the services are um, some kind of um, uh, some kind of things the Bluetooth Low Energy sensor or device provides. This can be a battery service, in my case here the temperature and humidity service, then the general info service, and yeah, uh, there can be multiple services, but we need to discover them first. So we say resource.loading, and the message will be now discovering services, and then we can say get dot discover services. And we can also say this um, uh, of our receive manager instance dot get is equal to this get because now we have we, we can be sure that this is our our Bluetooth low energy device and the specific get for it. And now we can also check uh, here a new state which is also in the get success, um, uh, which is the state disconnected uh, state because um, state disconnected does not mean that anything uh, worked wrong. We can also disconnect intentionally. So we will also check uh, if the state is disconnected here. And then we can say curatine scope dot launch data dot emit. And this time we say resource dot success because uh, a get success with state disconnected is also a success, a successfully operational. And we can pass some data here and we will provide some kind of um, uh, default data here of our temp humidity result, which has uh, zero temperature and zero humidity and the connection state, connect, connection state of our um, connection state sealed interfaces will be um, state disconnected here. And after that, we can say get.close. Now in our else block here, case it is not a get success we first want to close the get get dot close and then i want to say current connection attempt plus equal one this is a variable i uh, created up here and this is uh, one by default and if the connection attempt fails then we go into the else block and uh, increase this by one and the reason for that is if the Bluetooth low energy sensor is three or four meters away, then maybe the first connection attempt does not succeed. And we will try it again up to five times before we will give up. So um, uh, for that, we also need uh, another private bar. Maximum connection attempts is equal to five. Well, we can make this uh, uppercase maximum maximum connection attempts is equal to five. And then we can check maybe if we uh, exceed this five attempts, then we will give up and uh, give a, um, a, a message to the user in the UI. But here we can say curatine scope dot launch data dot emit and we say resource dot loading because we are still loading, we are trying again attempting to connect current connection attempt and say maximum connection attempt so maybe one of five or three of five attempts so and down here we can um, check if current connection attempt is equal or less than maximum connection attempts and if this is the case we are still uh, trying uh, less than five times and we can then say start receiving again, which then calls where's our start receiving function here, this function again. And else we can say curatine scope dot launch data dot emit. And then we can say resource dot error this time. And the error message will be could not connect to PLE device. Oh, and we have a little error here because uh, 
it assumes that we pass data here and then it says um, it won't temp humidity result but this data is optional uh, in our loading we could uh, we could have uh, some data but we don't have this use case in in our application uh, we need to annotate this with message and the error is gone and let me take this in another line here so all right now we need to override another callback function which is the on service discovered and we can also remove the super call here again and remove this question mark and then we can say with get and then we can say print get table which is an extension function I will provide in my GitHub repository here. And you should um, uh, print your get table for your Bluetooth Low Energy device to see what uh, services are um, discovered and what services the Bluetooth Low Energy sensor or device uh, provides. In our BLE package here, we create a new Kotlin file called BLE extensions. And then we can paste this code here and we will go through it but um, yeah I don't think uh, I should type this here off uh, while you are looking um, uh, this video is already quite long and yeah um, so on the one hand we have print get table here and which looks for the services and if the service is empty and uh, then maybe we should discover the services first and if we have services then we can go for each service the Bluetooth Low Energy sensor or device provides. We will have um, some characteristics. So um, uh, let me explain this. You have a service, for example, um, which is called um, uh, temperature and humidity service. Then the service has also some characteristics. Maybe one characteristic is the temperature and one characteristic is the humidity. And then it will um, uh, print this, this different characteristics of the service and um, uh, for each characteristic then there are also descriptions and um, uh, descriptors and a specific descriptor is used to, uh, um, uh, to subscribe to such a characteristic to receive data from it and uh, the general descriptor UUID is um, uh, is this ID here. Um, uh, you can find this if you discover the service um, or check the Bluetooth low energy specification. And yeah, this uh, print table function just prints all the um, characteristics, descriptors, and yeah, you should definitely um, uh, print such a table to discover your own Bluetooth low energy device. And uh, yeah, we have here uh, also the print, print properties here, which is which is called here extension function of such a Bluetooth get characteristics. And there um, uh, we can check if such a characteristic is, for example, if it's readable, if we can read uh, values from it, if we can uh, write values to it, we uh, can also um, write some character, uh, write values to some characteristics and all that stuff it is uh, indicatable that's uh, for subscription uh, to get notification uh, and all that stuff and then we have also the print properties of a, of a descriptor which is uh, down here such a descriptor can be also readable and writable and this this checks here uh, is readable is writable um, are defined here and yeah just copy and paste this code and um, if you want to know more uh, about this, um, then uh, go to the Bluetooth Low Energy specification or the Bluetooth library specification uh, uh, from Android. But I think this would be overkill to, uh, to explain here in detail. This uh, video would be go two hours then. And back in our um, BLE receipt manager, we can then um, print this get table. And after that, we inform the user for another process step. So we say qroutine scope.launch and data.emit resource.loading. And the message will be this time at justing MTU space. So I will explain this soon. And we can say 
get dot request mtu with 570 so the mtu of such a bluetooth low energy device is the maximum or the the um, data the data amount which can be sent from this sensor or device to our android phone and this is by default 20 20 bytes and if you want to request more bytes then you can increase this to 517 which is the uh, maximum amount specified by android or by um, bluetooth uh, in general but it does not mean that the mtu increases to this number so you should always consider that it could be also um, remain 20. Uh, I've tested this with my Bluetooth low energy device and I've requested 517 and uh, my Bluetooth uh, low energy device was able to uh, increase the MTU to I think 245 or something like this. And to get uh, the information if this was successful or how much uh, MTU um, uh, your device accepted uh, we can uh, override another um, callback function on MTU changed. And again, we can remove the super call and the question mark here. And in here, you can just print this MTU int, which will indicate how much uh, MTU uh, the device accepted. So after the MTU is uh, requested, we come to the next step. And now we need to find our characteristics we want to subscribe to. So in my case, the temperature and humidity characteristics. So I will say characteristic is equal to find characteristic, which will be a function I didn't uh, write yet. So let's write that. And to find such a characteristic, we need the service UUID and the characteristics UUID. And if you printed your get table, then you would see what different uh, UUIDs the, the specific service and characteristics has. You also need to look in the user manual of your Bluetooth or energy device. And um, there, are, uh, there are some general services and characteristics on the Bluetooth um, uh, website. But um, uh, some sensors have uh, different characteristic and service UUIDs. In my case, I have to I had to look to the user manuals of my of my sensor here. And yeah, you also need to check this and um, then have a look at the get table if the specific service and characteristic UUID is printed. So um, our find characteristic function will be a private fun find characteristics and it will take the service UUID of type string and the characteristic not that one characteristics UUID also of type string and it will return Bluetooth get characteristic of type optional because um, uh, it could happen that the characteristic does not get fine. So, and then we will return get dot services dot find service and then service dot UUID to string is equal to our service UUID. And if, if we find this, this is all optional here because uh, anything can happen and um, the, the search could not find any services so you need to wrap this uh, into optional and then characteristics dot find then characteristics and here in this block we will say characteristics uuid to string is equal to our characteristics uuid and then we can call this function and now we need to our service and our characteristics UUID which I find in my users manual and define them as constants here above. So in my case uh, the interest I'm interested in the in this service UUID which is for the temperature and humidity service and the characteristic is this one and um, yeah if you have a closer look at the um, documentation you will see that there are just such um, four, four character values um, but we need to always um, wrap this in, in this format here with this uh, 
appending uh, string values. And now we can go back to our to our MTU callback function and say here um, uh, temp humidity service UUID and temp humidity uh, characteristics UUID. After we have received the characteristic, we need to check if it's null because uh, maybe it couldn't find this one. And if it's null, it will say coroutine scope dot launch and inform the UI that uh, an error occurred. Data dot emit resource dot error and the error message will be could not find temp and humidity publisher. Return. And if everything works well and we found our temp and humidity characteristic, we can say enable notification with our characteristic here. And this function uh, is also not here yet. Uh, we, we will write this now to receive notification, to subscribe, to uh, get always informed if the temperature and the humidity changed. And before we start uh, writing this function, we need to uh, remove this return here and put it down here. It has nothing to do with the purity scope, so it should be here. And down here we can say private fun enable notification, which takes a characteristics of type blue 2 get characteristic. And first we need a CCD UUID, which can be get from UUID from string. And this will be our CCCD descriptor UUID. We define this here in the BLE extensions. I think it's this, it's this ID here um, for all descriptors. Um, uh, but you have to look at your get table if the descriptor um, really has this value for your specific value, you know, your specific characteristics you want to retrieve or subscribe to. So back here we need to define a payload. It's equal to when characteristics that is I indicatable, then it will be to get descriptor dot enable indication value. When it's notificable, then we will say get this crypto dot enable notification value, and else we can just return. So let's write like this. Down here we can say characteristic dot get this crypto for our CCD UUID and say let ccd descriptor a lot of c's here <laughs> if get dot set characteristic notification to our characteristic and enable true is equal to false then we will return and we can also print a message here block d bla receive manager and the message will be set correct set correct notification failed. And if this um, uh, succeeds, we say write descriptor, which will be a function we uh, also need to define and takes our CCCD descriptor and our payload. And yeah, down here we will write this function. So private fun write descriptor, which takes a descriptor of type Bluetooth get descriptor, and it also takes a payload, payload of type byte array. In here we can check the um, get of null and um, uh, execute the commands in this block here. We say descriptor.value is equal to payload. And we say get dot write descriptor, and this will be our descriptor. And if this is null, we can say error not connected to a BLE device. All right, now uh, we are almost done for our BLE service. We just need to define the um, reconnect and disconnect functions, but this will be uh, really simple here. Uh, the the most work is done now and yeah, it was 
kinda heavy here, the spiel e service, so I hope you <laughs> didn't uh, turn off your screens yet. <laughs> Down here our override functions reconnect and disconnect. We can just uh, write one single line and say get dot disconnect and here we can say get dot connect. Sorry, I lied about the simple functions. Uh, the close connection function uh, does require one um, bigger function, um, but then uh, we are we have finished this class. Uh, I promise. <laughs> so BLE scanner dot stop scan in case it's still scanning. So we want to stop the scan if the connection gets closed because otherwise it would drain the battery. And then we can say uh, characteristic is equal to find characteristic our service UUID and our uh, characteristic UUID and if characteristic is not equal to null so we are currently um, uh, listening to um, one characteristic um, then we need to disconnect the characteristic because otherwise it would also um, train the battery and after that we can say get.close and obviously this takes our characteristic. And I need to correct something here. I told you that if this is not equal to null, we are currently listening to uh, notifications or getting notifications from our BLE device. And that's not true. This means uh, that we just found the characteristic if this is not equal to null, but this function won't have any effect if we are currently not listening. So um, this should be fine to call it here. And we will define a private func, disconnect characteristic, and this takes our characteristic of type to get characteristic. First, we need our CCD UUID, which we can get off UUID from string CCD descriptor UUID, like we did before, characteristic dot get descriptor CCD UUID. And then we make a null check and inside this block here we can check if that characteristic notification characteristic false is equal to false and then we can uh, print the error message of our receive manager temp unit receive manager and say set character characteristics notification failed and then we can return and otherwise we can write the descriptor or the description with our cccd oh we take here cccd this descriptor like this and pass it down here and we can say Bluetooth get descriptor dot disable notification value. Last time we enabled it and now we um, disable it here. In our enable notification we uh, had a different value here. Okay, all right. Now the last thing we need to do here is to receive our temperature and humidity values. And we can do this in our get callback here and override one characteristic change. So we can also remove the super again and remove this question mark and then we can say with characteristic we can also remove this question mark um, when UUID this means the UUID of this Bluetooth characteristic so when this is our UUID from string temp humidity characteristics UUID. Then we can be sure that this is our temperature and humidity result. And otherwise we will just do nothing. And inside here we now need to pass this characteristic value we get. And therefore you also need to go to your user's manual of your BLE device or sensor because um, this there's a specific format. In my case, it's some, something like this. So this is the value for the, um, uh, if it's positive or ne negative uh, temperature, 
this is the temperature before the comma and this is the temperature after the comma this is uh, just an empty space and this is the humidity before the comma and this is the humidity after the comma so it could be something like like this uh, these are just crap values but um, uh, it will look like this and it can also be um, uh, a and f or something like this because this is hexadecimal so we need to um, pass this and for that i will say multiplicator is equal if value dot first dot two int two int is greater than zero then the multiplicator is minus one and else it's one so um, this is uh, in my case the multiplicator so this one here and yeah if this is uh, greater than null this this is in the specification of my bluetooth low energy device you need to look how you can pass this then the temperature is equal to value dot one to int plus value dot two to int divided by 10f because this is my um, uh, this is the value after the comma then well humidity is equal to value dot four to int plus value 5 to int divided by 10f for my humidity and then the while temp humidity result is equal to temp humidity result multiplicator times temperature and the humidity is just the humidity i will put this in a separate line here so it's more readable and the last thing is our connection state connection state dot connected all right and then we can say purity scope dot launch data dot emit and this will be a resource dot success and the data will be our temp humidity result so now each time the sensor emits new data and on this characteristics uh, this callback function get triggered and the new fund, the, the new values here for the temperature and the humidity gets calculated and gets then emitted to the view model uh, in our flow and yeah that should be it for our blue two low energy service now we can uh, we can uh, listen to these values from our view model and update the uh, user interface state and in case if you are asking yourself how to read uh, values from such a BLE device or write values to it um, I can also show you a little example here I won't implement this here uh, but just that you get a slight overview um, you could write a private fun I would just call this example and then you have your get and then get service UUID from string this is your service ID and then you can say get characteristics UUID from string with your characteristics UUID and then you simply say get dot read characteristics and we need to save this in a value here and pass it down here and now you can go to your get callback and say on on characteristic read and inside this uh, callback function, you can then um, access the reader's value. So characteristic dot value would be the value if this callback function here triggers. And of course, you should also check before if this characteristic is readable. And if you want to write some value to it, of course, if it's uh, writable. But yeah, with this get, you can do anything you want. And inside your get callback, you can overwrite all these callback functions for write, for example, on characteristic writes if um, everything worked so far. And yeah, so you can um, do all that operations here uh, with your Bluetooth get. 
um, but we just uh, use the notification here of the characteristic and won't implement uh, writes and read operation because we are just interested in the notification stuff so the update uh, each second now we can go into our presentation package create a new kotlin class called temp humidity view model which takes one constructor argument constructor we need to uh, specify this in decahilt uh, but we will do this after the, the declaration here private well um, uh, temperature and humidity receive manager it's important that you uh, use the interface here because if you want to test this humidity and temperature view model then you can pass a fake implementation uh, which implements this interface and you don't need to connect to a real bluetooth flow energy device during your test cases all right and now we need to specify uh, in dagger hill in our app module how this uh, receive manager will be provided so we go to our app module and down here we say provides at singleton spang provides temp humidity receive manager and this takes the application context which dagger hilt knows how to provide that and our bluetooth adapter and since we declared our uh, to how to provide such a bluetooth adapter um, it should be fine to inject this here inside the um, app module and this will return a temperature and humidity receive manager interface and the concrete implementation of that is return temperature and humidity BLE receive manager. So the, the BLE, the concretion, um, but uh, Dagger Hilt returns uh, this one because um, this uh, implements the interface. And then we can say Bluetooth adapter and context. And now Dagger knows how to provide such a temperature and humidity receive manager. And in our view model, we can then start to define our states. And before I forget it, we need to annotate this with add build view model. And down here, we need to inherit from view model and import that. So the first state is our initializing message by mutable state of of type string which is an optional and null by default then we have a, an error message by mutable state of string which is also null then we have the var temperature by mutable state of which is a 0f zero float value by default and then we have also the humidity by mutable state of 0f and we also make this private set variables because we just want to set this variables inside our view model but uh, read from it we can everywhere so and the last state value is uh, our connection state or connection state by mutable state of type connection state this will be our connection state dot uninitialized by default and now we can start with our function to subscribe to our uh, emits from the bluetooth low energy receive manager this will be a private fun Sub subscribe to changes and we will start this in the view model scope dot launch and we say temperature and humidity receive manager which we know has a, a data value so we can say data.collect because we want to collect this flow and the result uh, is available in our block here then we can say when result is resource that success is resource dot loading or is resource dot error so now you can see the power of this resource class. We can differentiate between successful uh, messages or successful emits, uh, loading emits and error emits. And this um, uh, result class, if we take a look at here, you can say 
result the data then we have also our temp humidity result here so this is the main advantage of this resource class to wrap this uh, class around uh, some data classes and uh, differentiate between uh, for example loading success and um, error states so inside here we can say um, our connection state connection state is equal to result.data.connection state because a successful um, emit can also mean that the um, state is disconnected when we disconnect this uh, intentionally then the temperature is equal to result dot data dot temperature and the humidity is equal to result dot data dot humidity and this is for our success block here now in our loading block we will say initializing message is equal to result dot message so um, uh, we have seen that in our temperature and to low energy manager if we go here we always emit this uh, loading functions that the ui is uh, knowing what's currently going on and here um, uh, uh, testing uh, mtu space attempting to connect discovering service and all that stuff so we can always show the user what's the application currently doing and our connection state will be connection state dot currently initializing and in case of an error, we can say error message is equal to result dot error message, and the connection state is equal to connection state dot uninitialized, because when we receive an error, then uh, we know that we are not currently uh, connected. We, or better said, we we need to start the connection um, uh, from the beginning. So it's uninitialized here. On here in our view model, we will have a, um, a public function initialize connection, which we can call from our um, UI when all permissions are granted from the user. Then we can initialize the connection and then we say error message is equal to null. Subscribe to changes, so invoke this function here and temperature and humidity receive manager dot start receiving and then i want to overwrite a function from our view model i will overwrite on cleared and if the view model gets cleared we will also want to um, uh, disconnect from our um, uh, device so we can say temperature and humidity receive manager dot close connection and now we have two functions left for our view model on the one hand we have the function uh, reconnect which we can call from our um, UI depending on life cycle events on stop for example or on resume or on start and here we can say temperature humidity receive manager re reconnect and we also have a functional disconnect and uh, we can disconnect from our blue cooler energy device all right the uh, difference between disconnect and close connection is that um, uh, the, if the connection is disconnected and reconnected again and then it um, is um, uh, faster because the instant is there the, the services are discovered and all that stuff and close connection means really to close the whole connection and um, uh, next time you want to open it you need to start from the very beginning so this is it for the view model and now the only thing is left um, to create our um, temperature and humidity screen where we check the permissions and um, uh, build the simple UI and receive the, the state changes here from our view model to display what's currently going on and what are the values of our blue to low energy sensor. Before we can start building the UI we need to go to our permissions package inside the presentation package and create a new object called permission utils in which we will define the required permissions depending on the um, SDK and so required permissions is equal to if build dot version dot SDK and is greater or equal than build dot version codes dot s which is I think Android 6 then we have two more permissions uh, we will have um, manifest dot permission dot bluetooth scan manifest dot permission dot to connect 
manifest.permission um, access find location and manifest.permission access course location. And if we, blo we are below um, Android 6, then we just need this two permissions. List of. All right, now we can access the permission from our UI and request everything we need. And one thing that's missing regarding our permissions is the definition in the manifest. So we need to say use permission Bluetooth connect. Use permission Bluetooth scan. Then course location. And um, access location, what's it called? Find location, this one here. Now in our temperature and humidity screen, we can say welcome permission state is equal to remember multiple permission states. And the permissions we want to take care of will come from our permission utils dot permissions. And we get an error warning here because uh, a component uh, is not ready for production yet, but this uh, dependency um, uh, is stable for two years now, I think, so it should be fine using it. Uh, but we need to annotate this with experimental permissions API. Then we need a lifecycle owner to get the, the different lifecycle methods on create, on start, and so on. This will be local lifecycle owner dot current, and we also need the PLE connection state from our view model, which we don't have yet. So we will say here um, view model um, uh, temp humidity view model is equal to tilt view model, and now we can say view model dot connection state. Now we need a disposable effect for our lifecycle owner because we just want this to get triggered if our lifecycle owner changes. So if another lifecycle method is called and inside this effect block, we define our observer, which then uh, is observed by our lifecycle owner. And the disposable effect is also chosen because we need to remove this observer um, in case of uh, the disposition of uh, this composable here. Lifecycle event observer, and we can ignore the first value and then check on this event value. If event is equal to lifecycle dot event dot on start, we will request for multiple permission. So permission state launch multiple permission request, and if permission state dot all permissions are granted, then this just doesn't have any effect and PLE connection state is equal to connection state dot disconnected. This is the case when um, uh, the user already had a connection and minimizes the app. We will see this uh, in on stop method uh, soon. Then the connection state will be disconnected and um, uh, if all permissions are granted and the user uh, reopens the app, so on start gets fired, then uh, we will say view model dot reconnect. And in the next if statement, we will check event lifecycle dot event dot on stop. In the on stop method, we will check if BLE connection state is equal to connection state dot connected. So if the phone is currently connected to our Bluetooth low energy sensor or device, and then we advise the view model to disconnect. And down here, we will add this observer, lifecycleowner.lifecycle.addObserver, and pass our observer. And in our the dispose, on dispose function, we will remove this observer lifecycle dot remove observer and we will also pass our observer here. Now we will have another side effect which is in this case a launched effect that uh, listens on the permission state dot 
all permissions granted. So uh, this effect gets fired when all permissions are granted or this specific state is changed. And then we can ask if permission state all permissions are granted and if BLE connection state is equal to connection state dot uninitialized, then we will initialize our connection, our first connection. View model dot initialize connection. Now we can start with uh, the UI elements. First we will have a box which takes a modifier, modifier dot fill max size, import box here, and the content alignment, content alignment will be alignment.center. Let's make a little bit of space here. And inside this box, we will have a column, which has also a modifier, modifier dot fill max width. I will choose 60% uh, of this of, of the screen width here for this uh, column. Aspect ratio is set to 1f, so we will get an, an equal uh, rectangle. We will also apply a border here with a border stroke 5dp, and the color will be color.blue and import dp here. And this border will be also have a rounded corner shape of 10 dp. And then we also have a vertical arrangement, which will be arrangement.center and a horizontal alignment, which will be alignment.center horizontally. So the, the text of the two um, uh, values of the temperature and humidity gets displayed in the middle of this, of this column. Now we have a bunch of um, uh, if conditions here for our UI. If BLE con connection state is equal to connection state dot currently initializing, then we will draw a column, which takes also a modifier, modifier dot fill max width, and the vertical arrangement will arrangement dot space by 5 dp. And the horizontal alignment will be alignment.center horizontally. But you can uh, adjust this uh, UI elements uh, as you wish. This is just an example. So inside this column, we will have a circular progress indicator so that the user can see that it's currently loading. And then we can check if the view model dot initializing message is not equal to null. We can also display this in a text and import text here. And the text will be view model dot initializing message. And we can assert that this is not null because we did the check here. Now we have another conditioner, else if. Um, if not all permissions are granted, then we need to check them or we need to inform the user that um, uh, the permissions are still required. And when I think about it, this should only get triggered if the user denies the permission two times, or this does, it do, does not accept the permission for two times, so the dialogue will move away forever, and then we can inform the user how to make this work. So go to the app settings, and allow the missing permissions. The style will be material theme dot typography dot body two. The modifier will be modifier dot padding ten dp, and the text align will text align dot center. The next conditioner will be um, our error message view model dot error message is not equal to null so an error is set then we can also create a column here which takes a modifier well, modifier is equal to modifier dot fill max size the vertical arrangement will be arrangement dot center and the 
horizontal alignment will be alignment dot center horizontally and inside this column we will have the text view model dot arrow message and in case this is null uh, it shouldn't be null because we checked this here uh, let's remove this conditional operator here and just assert that this is not null here and we will also have a button with an on-click method here like this and then we can check in the on-click uh, function here permission state dot all permissions are granted view model dot initialize connection and inside this button uh, we will have a little text which says, says try again the next conditional will be our ble connection state is equal to connection state dot connected so we have successfully connected to our ble device then we can also um, uh, take a column with a modifier modifier dot fill max size horizontal alignment will be alignment dot center horizontally and the vertical arrangement will be also arrangement dot center and inside this column we now have our two text fields the first one text is equal to humidity and here we can say view model dot humidity and the style of this text will be material theme typography dot h6 and the second text will be our temperature text is equal to temperature from our view model dot temperature and the style will be also material scene typography h6 here and before we can try this out, we need to add one more permission in our Android manifest, which I forgot. And this is the YouTube admin permission. So we will just add this and now we can uh, um, try this out. So we need to make one little adjustment. Um, I've tested this one minute ago and um, uh, received no values and the state did not update and this is because in our ble receiver manager we have this uh, senseless uh, getter here which is totally dumb <laughs> um, uh, we always get this empty mutable shared flow if we access this uh, data value so this getter needs to be removed and we need to uh, initialize this immediately with this empty mutable shared flow and now we can start the app and when i click on start here then the app requests for the um, device's location in our permission utils i told you that this is android version 6 but i think it's uh, 10 or 11 i was wrong there uh, because my phone here has, has android 9 and I'm just requested for the device location. And if you have a device which has equal or higher build version than Android's uh, version S, then you would have two um, permission dialogues here, two requested permissions. And when I click on allow, then the device starts scanning, connecting to the device and discovering the services. And then we can see the values here, which are really, which are looking like static right now but when i take the sensor and blow into it then you can see the humidity increases rapidly so it should work yeah and now we can also check uh, if the user denies or, uh, or um, re refuses some permissions uh, during runtime first of all we want to um, close the app during runtime so close it and reopen it again this looks good it just continues working because we disconnect from the sensor uh, when we close the app and reconnect oh well this humidity goes over the top and then we can also check if we disable bluetooth here and if we do this um, uh, it requests us to allow bluetooth okay i will allow it but the fields remain empty um, uh, there's 
something wrong with the state, I think. Um, uh, well, I have uh, to look into this. Okay, I've uh, found the mistake and it's here. We need another um, else if um, uh, condition in our temperature and humidity screen. Um, uh, we need to check if the BLE connection state is equal to connection state dot uh, disconnected. This is the case when uh, we successfully disconnect from our Bluetooth device. And when we turn off Bluetooth, then um, uh, in our um, temperature and humidity receive manager, um, uh, we will come into this method here, which uh, is a get success because we successfully disconnect. And uh, then this um, uh, function gets uh, this coroutine scope that launch gets called. And in here we have the connection states disconnected. So we need to listen or uh, check if this is the case. And if this is the case, we just say a button um, with a one click function. And inside this one click, we can then um, uh, initialize the connection again if the uh, user clicks on this button and initialize again for the buttons text. And then we can uh, restart the application. All right, when I click on start now, then scanning BLE devices, connecting to the device, discovering services. And now I can turn off Bluetooth. And now you can see this uh, initialize again button. Uh, when I click on allow and initialize again, then it just starts from the beginning because when Bluetooth is turned off, the initial uh, the connection is really gone and we need to initialize it from the start. And now we can check the, um, the next case when uh, we turn off the permission in our app settings, for example. As you can see, I am in the um, app permissions of my ELE tutorial app and then I turn off location and now go back to the app then um, it asks us for the um, location again. So um, when I click deny, then um, uh, I've denied it two times, one time in the settings and now in the dialogue. And now we need to go to the app setting and allow the missing permissions. So let's go right into the settings and allow it again and go back to the application. And then it automatically starts with connecting to the device. So I think everything works uh, really good so far. And yeah, that's it, I think. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about BLE connection in Android. I know this was a hard tutorial and it was kind of long, especially the BLE service stuff. But I hope you could uh, follow along. And um, if you have some questions, uh, more detailed questions about this uh, BLE service and uh, the UUIDs and characteristic service and all that stuff, uh, then uh, just comment and ask me and I try to um, answer all your questions. So um, thank you for listening and we will see us in the next video.